everyone, welcome back to another of my Friday sews here on my channel, Stick Trip Repeat. I am Helen and I am very happy to have you along with me today. So you'll have seen from the thumbnail, today is mostly gonna be about my finished Eden coat. And I've got a couple of things just to mention to sort of round up my weekly chat. So I'm gonna pop my tea down, grab my coat and uh, tell you all about it. Okay, so here is my finished coat and I absolutely love how it's turned out. I wanted to explain a little bit about why it appeared to take such a long time. <laughs> so, as I said, I've made it um, appear, I think, more difficult than it actually is. So there's a few reasons. One of them being that as I'm using this soft shell, it has the most gorgeous, fleecy lining on the reverse side, which I'm hoping shows up on the camera. And I wanted to use that, whereas the actual pattern calls for a lining. But for that reason, I decided I was going to do this coat in my weekly sewing classes that I take here at Make At 140. And the lovely Vanessa is the sewing instructor there. And I knew that she would be able to help me work through the pattern. So that made it a bit longer because obviously there are steps where I'm kind of making it up because you would have been finishing edges by basically attaching the lining and bagging it all out, pulling it through and all those finished edges would then be inside between the outer and the lining. But as I didn't have the lining, I've had to do all this wonderful bias binding 10 meters of bias binding I bought from Lizzie at the beginning and it is everywhere. So I will put pictures in as well, but I've lined, um, not lined, sorry, I've enclosed seams. So on the inside, all those seams that would have been hidden between the lining and the outer are finished with the bias bindings. So you've got the sleeves, the armholes, all the main ones where the hood joins um, the panels in the hood, um, everywhere basically had to have this bias binding. So obviously if you were making this coat the way it is designed to have that lining, you would only be sewing pieces together on your main piece and your lining piece and then sort of stitching them together. So it would be quicker. Also, I um, wanted to Again, like I say, do it in my sewing class only. So I basically took it to my sewing class, worked on it at my sewing class, and then didn't touch it in between. So that was only once a week. And I have to say, and uh, the lovely Angela, who is Devon Thrift Tales, uh, will agree. Although it's a three hour sewing lesson, I'm out and with adults. So probably 50% of the sewing lesson is actually um, chatting and drinking tea and eating biscuits. So I don't get a lot of hours. If I physically had just sat down and worked through this coat, it wouldn't obviously have taken me anywhere near as long. So that is one of the main reasons why it appears to have taken long is obviously having to work out how to finish seams without having that lining and obviously only working on it maybe two hours a week. <laughs> so. But I am really, really glad that I did take my time because it's been a really enjoyable sew, apart from the occasional uh, mishap and <laughs> things like sewing one pocket on in one colour and the other pocket on in a different colour. Yeah, that wasn't my best moment. Hand sewing a few of the binding bits led to uh, bleeding fingers, which on white, not great either, but <laughs> on the whole, it was a thoroughly enjoyable make. Excuse me, that's the dog. <laughs> Sorry about that, dog needs in. So, in the pattern here, I went for the size five. Now, if you can't see this, obviously, I will pop in a photo. Um, but it gives you on the packet, it gives you measurements for your bust, waist and hips, which if you know Tilly's patterns, she has her own measurements in a size 
1 to 10, although this is in her original, which only went up to an 8. These are the equivalent of a size UK 6 up to a UK 20. Now, I went for the 5, which was for lots of reasons. So, I went for the 5 based on the measurements that I normally do with Tilly, which is a bust of 38 and a waist of 32 and hips of 41. So I've done lots of Tilly patterns and this works fine. And in the finished measurements, that then gives you a 46 and a half inch bust, 47 and a half waist and 48 and a half for the hips. So the main thing I wanted from this jacket was obviously I wanted it to fit, um, but you may hopefully be able to tell that it's a bit even um, when done up, it's a little bit on the loose side. So I've got lots of room. Now I wanted this, okay, because I have fitted raincoats. I even have ones with the sort of drawstring bit in the middle so you can tighten them. I wanted this to be a looser fit. So at the moment I'm only wearing a top, but my plan is when I wear things like sweatshirts and bulky jumpers, I want to still be able to comfortably get this on and that's worked perfectly. So a few of the things that I did differently, as I said, was obviously bias binding for seams. So again, when it came to the sleeves, I was going to originally, um, hopefully you can see, it's got bias binding around the bottom of the sleeve. And my plan was I was going to turn that in and stitch it down. I'm hoping you can see that. But I actually really like long sleeves on a jacket. I do tend, as I'm doing now, <laughs> to hold my sleeves. And when I've got a bulky jumper underneath, it kind of pulls the sleeve up a little bit anyway. So when I'd done the burst binding, I just left it. Because why be able to sew your own clothes if you can't decide on things like that? So that's how I actually did the sleeve in the end. I put a grey zip, which again, I'm hoping you can see. This is a big, chunky zip. Again, one of my <laughs> problematic parts of this sew. I ordered a green, which turned out not to be the right green at all. So then I ordered a white and a grey, and um, the grey I thought went perfectly. The white actually was slightly too bright and made this white look a little bit dirty. So yeah, I bought a grey chunky zip, which I think looks really nice. I got these metal studs, which come in a little pack, and if I can find the photo or the pack, I will put them in. And I've put them down the front and on my pockets, where obviously you can see I've done that bias binding for the flap as well and all the way up on the hood. So when you put your hood up, you can do the snaps all the way up. I think maybe when I pop to Dartmoor and it's bad weather, I might do that, but generally I'm not gonna do it all the way up, but it's there if I want to. So as I said, um, took a long time for lots of reasons, not really because of the pattern, but more because of my changes to the pattern. This soft shell was lovely to work with. I did use a Microtech needle. And before I forget, I wanna give a shout out to three people. Firstly, from Fliss, from Felicity Fabrics, who was the original inspiration because she has made this jacket in this fabric. I think it was a couple of years ago now. And I basically just thought, I'm gonna do that. I love it, I'm doing the same. So I'll probably have popped her photo in of Fliss in her jacket. You may notice on hers, she's put the storm flaps. So there's a storm flap on either side at the front and there's also one at the back. I have not put those on back or the front. I just cosmetically didn't like them. So I've left them off. Um, so Fliss was the first person and then also Paige Joanna and Jess from So What If I Sew. I saw both these lovely ladies making Eden coats and doing sew-alongs on YouTube. I can't remember, last year I think it probably was. 
and they really encouraged me to give it a go because it wasn't as difficult or so as I was making in my mind that it would be. So yeah, I hope you like how it's turned out. I would definitely recommend giving it a go. Mad I may be, but I'm already thinking of doing another one in the, oh, it's not on here. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. In the duffel coat version. So I'm guessing that would be lined and obviously it's a much longer uh, coat. And now that I've done obviously one, I think I feel quite happy to tackle a duffel coat version. And I do have some lovely suiting fabric, which is like a plum color, which I think would work fabulously. So Eden Coat from Tilly and the Buttons is a big thumbs up from me. I've already worn it numerous times because in the UK here, it's that time of year and I've had some lovely comments on it. And um, yeah, I am all done and I hope you like what you see. So I'm just gonna take this off and just show you um, one more thing about my week uh, to round up my Friday sews. I should have said before I um, finished about my rain, my raincoat there, if you have any comments or questions, because I may have just ran through that in my usual rambling way and not explained something that you wanted to know, please do pop them down in the comments. I always try and answer the comments. I'm a little behind on my last couple of videos, but I've read them all and I promise I will get back to you. So the other thing I wanted to show you, just one second, if you've been following me on Instagram and my stories, you'll know I'm going through my So Hayley Jane fabrics that I haven't used yet and trying to get some inspiration ideas of patterns that I could use. I have three more here that I would love opinions on what you think might be a good make for any of them. So I'll just pop them down a sec and go through each one. So this one, I think, I think it was the July box. Um, and I absolutely love this black and white gingham. And if you don't know, I have the classic box. I have a playlist for all my unboxings, so you can go and check them out if you like. But I love this. I have two and a half meters because I have the classic box. I was thinking of a nice dress because I'm thinking with black, I can easily wear it in the winter with black tights and boots, but I still think I could get away with it in the summer with pumps. So my initial thought for this fabric is the Megan Nielsen Darling Rangers dress. Yes, no. If you've any other ideas, I would love to hear them for that one. And then the other two that I have are double gauzes. So I have this gorgeous double gauze, which now I've completely lost when I got the fabrics. Um, but it is this absolutely gorgeous sort of leaf print on this white double gauze. And again, obviously all these fabrics are two and a half meters. I did see the lovely Ruan did some pajamas and I'm very tempted, but what do you think? I, I'm open to any suggestions for my double gauze there. And then I also have this double gauze, which I want to say was a couple of months ago. I think it probably was. I absolutely love this. And again, I am open to any suggestions what you think I should make with two and a half meters of this double gauze. So that is me. I've still got the two Agnes's uh, where I had the fabrics I showed you last week. I haven't been able to touch on them yet this week. I will have another video coming up soon talking about a project which you may already have seen on Instagram called the Little Red Dress Project. I am very happy to have been asked to be involved. I am one of the ambassadors and I will do a video talking all about it. And again, I'm probably gonna need your help with some choices on that one too. So I am gonna sign off for now. As always, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed, please do. Have a fabulous day, whatever you're doing, and I'll catch you all in my next video. Mm -hmm.